Hey guys, we got another awesome TG video to bring for you guys. This is the TG012167 Z, and this is a bad mamma jamma of a computer. I mean, this thing is smoking. It's hot, it's on fire, it's gonna do some awesome gaming. Uh, what you're gonna see in this video, we're gonna go over this PC, unbox it, we are gonna show you all the ports, what it can do, what it can't do, if you can upgrade it, if you can't. And then we're going to show some gaming and some benchmarks. All right, guys, before I bust this bad mamma jam of a PC open, we're going to talk about our wonderful long and big knife that, you know, I wonder why a lot of YouTubers have such a big knife on set. I don't know if they're compensating for something or what, but I mean, really, guys, do you really need that big of a knife? Like, this does the job perfectly fine. Maybe, maybe they had problems when they were born in 1985 because they just didn't come out right. But we're in her like sin. And uh, just show you what in, comes inside this wonderful box. This uh, operating system is Windows 10. It is Home 64. This does come with a bad mamma jam of a processor. It's got an AMD Ryzen 5 5700 Golf, which is 3.8 gigahertz base clock and a 4.6 gigahertz mass boost, max boost. It's going to be the generic. Um, keyboard and mouse, really nothing special. If you're going to be gaming, you want to upgrade this eventually. This is nothing special. It will get the it will get the job done though. I will say that it will do the job of gaming and maybe editing and some other stuff like that. So let's put this off to the side and let's go ahead and grab our little package of goodies out. We got a power cable and we actually do have some screws. Let me pull this out. This is the only cable that will come with this PC, is the one I'm pulling out of this package, is your power cable. So if you're wondering if there's an HDMI cable or an audio cable or anything like that, no. So this power cable is the only thing that comes with this PC. And then this bag of screws, which is going to be for installing hard drives, and it does have an M.2 screw in here. Don't rely on this. I've seen it where they don't come with screws at all, and I've seen it where they do. If you're wondering about that, I'll have something linked down in the description down below for a kit. These will only work for 3.5 millimeter hard drives. These will not work for SSDs. So if you're planning to install an SSD in this bad mamma jamma, well, you're kind of up poop creek. All right, guys, so I know I was talking about the processor that comes in here. There is 16 megabytes of L3 catch. This is an eight core 16 thread. It's a bad mamma jamma of a processor. One of the other nice things that comes with this is a 3060. It's an RTX 3060, 12 gigabytes of wonderful RAM that will do 4K gaming. It will also allow you to do up to three wonderful monitors. So let's get this bad mamma jam out of the box. I'm probably gonna have issues with because nothing ever comes out of the box right for me on set. Come on, you know you can do it. Push little one, push. There you go. All right, let's get this box out of our way. No longer need that. And let's uh, take some cardboard apart. All right, let's uh, take the skirt off and see what's under the hood. So I'm just gonna go over some ports and stuff on here that are kind of important. It does come with a green LED light in the front that a lot of people hate. You can pop the front off and it's the only cable that's attached to this. You go ahead and unplug it. I will show you that once I get inside. All right, starting from the top, you have your power button. You have a multi headphones jack. You can either do microphone or headset right here. It does have four USB 3.0s, a USB-C that's only five gigabytes per second. You got your multi-card you know, reader, like an SDXC slot, and then you have, sorry, I, I said the USB-C is right here. It is not, it's right there. So you got your four 3.0s right here and your USB-C down there. Uh, one thing that I am gonna expect is HP did say they sent this out with 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM should be 2x 8 gigabyte sticks but we will see once we get the the side off so i'm going to go around to the rear in the gear and we are going to see if we had an onboard graphics card this is where your ports would be of course you're not going to be using the onboard graphics card you're going to be utilizing this wonderful 3060 uh, this beautiful black mamma jam of a graphics card because they're so sexy when they're black you have a 10 1000 ethernet port you have some more USB 2.0s, and then of course, what's nice about this PC is it does have two more 3.21 uh, USB ports in the back, which they're USB A's, I think. Don't quote me on that, I might be wrong. I'm not gonna be toasty bros and start saying, ah, I don't know what that is, or it is what it is, but we'll figure it out. <coughs> Sorry guys, I know it's at least USB 3.2. So, um, anyways, 
From there, you do have a 400 watt platinum power supply, which is going to be running your bad mamma jamma of a processor and your graphics card. If you're like, hey, Tech Nitwit, is 400 watts going to be enough to actually run a RTX 3060? Yes, it is. The way they have the power budgeted in the system, this is more than sufficient to operate this graphics card and processor. So guys, we are going to get this thing turned around and I'm going to get under the hood and let you see what's inside. All right, guys, we're going to dive right into this, but a quick a couple quick things I want to go over quick as this does have upgradable RAM up to 32 gigabytes. There is a 512 gigabyte PCIe NVMe M.2 SSD in here. And this also comes with a one terabyte 7200 RPM SATA HHD hard drive for short, or our 3.5 hard drive for short. We are gonna bust open an iFixit kit and we are gonna go for the T15 Torx head. And that is right here. This is what it looks like, T15. And that's gonna be the, all your screws on an HP are gonna be T15 wonderfulness. If you're on some of the older HPs, it might not be a T15. You'll have a Phillips in the rear. So let's go around in the rear here, and we're gonna take this screw right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. And we are gonna unscrew that bad mamma jamma. Go ahead and make her loose. And then this case just pulls straight back into the rear. And then it actually kind of pops out. There you go. And we are out, and we are in her like sin. And she shows us all her goodies on the inside. So one quick thing I wanna show you guys is where you can read the power supply to see how many watts you have. I'm going to have to flip this thing upside down, but go ahead and if you look right, come on Tech Nibbit, find it, right here, it says total 400 watts. I don't know if you all can see that. And, that, and then also it tells you your 80 plus gold rated platinum power supply. Sorry, I might have said platinum, but it's gold rated. And then, of course, it does look like we have our hard drive mounted in the front right here. You can't really see it. Let me take some stuff apart. Go ahead and grab these three tabs right here. And this is how you could disable this light in the front. See this wire right here? This wire, if you just pull this, will allow you to pretty much disable the light in the front. It will unplug it because it does kind of get in the way. So go ahead and set the door up to the side. And the first screw we're going to go after is this one right here. And this is going to allow these two trays to come out. Go ahead and if you've got an iFixit kit or a tray, you can set your screw right there. And we are going to grab the screw right here and this is going to allow our extra trays that you could either put in a regular HDD 3.5 or a 2.5 uh, SSD in and we're going to pull them out. This is snapped in right here. You got to kind of put your thumb on it and pull forward and out and that comes out and then pretty much that's this whole piece of cage out. And then we're going to bring this guy. There are some wires that are going to be attached here like power and SATAs that you have to unclip from here. So if we look, you have to pull forward with them, if it allows me to. Come on. There you go. You pull forward, and then this whole drive cage comes out. There we go. That's now out. So if you see here, here's our power for our hard drive. There is one extra uh, SATA connection for an SSD or 3.5. You only have one cable, one SATA cable, which is this guy right here, hooked up to your uh, one terabyte. Um, HDD. Our M.2 is down here, if you can see that. So if you wanted to replace it with a bigger one or something of a larger size. Your Wi-Fi M.2 card is right up here. And we did come with dual channel RAM. HP, you... Thank you! Finally, you're listening to your customers and everybody else, like the YouTubers that are doing videos. Finally, dual channel RAM. HP's done it right. Other than this kind of wimpy heat sink, I put one of the Noctua's in in one of my other videos. I am going to be experimenting with that and trying to upgrade this because this is the socket LGA 1200. So I don't know if that has changed. So we have to get into that. And then of course we have our RTX 3060. So with this 400 watt power supply, you can do an RTX 3060, 3060 Ti, an RTX 2060, 2060 Super, you can put a 2060 Super in there and that's all with 400 watt. If you go and order the 500 watt, which I'll have down linked in the description below and in the bottom of this video, you can actually go to an RTX 3070. You can do a 2070 if you like, or 2070 Super. And if they ever do come out with a 3070 Super or TI, you'll be able to utilize one of those graphics cards. So guys, this is what's in the inside. The, these are 
uh, it's they're they're pretty simple on the inside. They do come with one X uh, PCI 3.0 right here that can give you um, like a streaming card or an M.2 card if you wanted to put in there if you find a one X. So there are some or an audio card it will allow it, and then this top cage piece would come off. So other than that, on the inside, you can replace these. This fan in the rear is a 90 millimeter um, regular fan. If you looked on Nocto and some of the other sites, they do have them. And it's just a standard three pin uh, plug down here. It's not PWM. But this one that hooks up to our AMD 5700 Golf is a four pin PWM. So if you're looking for coolers, you can make sure that the fan is a four pin and then this fan in the rear is a three pin. You can split this off to add more fans. It does not affect the PC. So if you want to do fan upgrades and stuff like that in the future to increase the cooling of your bad mamma jam of an awesomeness gaming computer, you can do that. Hey guys, one thing I'd never really point out are these wires right here. If you're wondering what these are for, these actually connect right up top here to your Wi-Fi card. So these are the antennas to actually give you your Wi-Fi signal. So if you have like a Wi-Fi 6 capable card, that is what it connects to. Um, this, there is Bluetooth technology also on here, so you can hook up your cell phone and do transferring and, and fun stuff like that. Pretty much it. We are going to get into some benchmarking gaming. All right, TechNidwit family, we just got done running the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark, and I want to go over what you would get if this was your PC at home. And let's look here. Go, pop over to the on screen really quick. And we scored an 8,452. And in Battlefield 5 on 1440p, we'd be looking at about 80 frames per second. Apex Legends, about 95 frames per second on 1440p. Fortnite, we're going to be about 90 frames per second. And of course, Dead Red, Red Dead Redemption, that eats every graphics card to lie. 1440p is about 30 frames per second. Um, two things I did want to mention really quick about this, uh, GPU size, if you are looking at getting an upgraded GPU for this, you're looking at about 10.5 max, cannot go over that. This does turn off, and I showed you guys how to do that in the beginning of the video. You can't turn it off from here, there is not changing the color, it is what it is. So we just got done with the Time Spy, we are going to do a Fire Strike benchmark and then jump from that we are going to do a Tomb Raider benchmark. We are going to show some great gameplay footage of Fortnite and what was, uh, Red Dead Redemption because that's the graphics card killer of them all. Uh, of course you can change your settings with this and you'll get different stuff but of course that's where we're sitting. I will read off the temperatures really quick here because you're probably wondering like is this thing a giant heater box? Looks like we topped out with the GPU temperature at 78 Celsius and the CPU temperature at 61 Celsius. This GPU is running kind of hot. Um, but other than that, guys, we are going to jump into another benchmark. Let's jump right into this Fire Strike benchmark, y'all. And pretty much we scored 5,077. And our maximum frames per second was... Uh, we scored 2667 and 1760 frames per second. All right, guys, so we're going to look at what our frames per second would be if we were to actually play a game comparative to the synthetic benchmark. It can kind of give you the statistics of what your FPS is going to be. So Battlefield 5 on 1440p Ultra, we're looking at 70 plus frames per second. Apex Legends, we are looking at 85 plus frames per second on 1440p Ultra. GTA 5 on 1440p Ultra, we're looking at 45 frames per second. And then, of course, Fortnite, we're looking at 80 frames plus per second. Red Dead Redemption, the, the one that uh, eats all graphics cards alive, is less than 30 frames plus. Of course, this is on Ultra. You could lower the settings to get better performance. Um, real quick, our GPU did max out to 72 Celsius, and our CPU did max out to 71 Celsius. You could run a program like MSI Afterburner and crank that fan up to 100% or even tune the fan so it's running at a faster RPM to cool that GPU. It didn't get as hot as running the DirectX 12 Time Spy benchmark, but it still did get pretty warm. 70 Celsius is on that kind of uncomfortable side. Really, 90 Celsius is where it starts a thermal throttle, but we don't ever want to get even that close to it. So guys, we're going to jump right into that Tomb Raider benchmark and I'll we'll give you some stats. Hey guys, we just got done with running this Tomb Raider benchmark. We did run with DLS on. Of course, pop you guys over to the on screen really quick and let's take a look at these settings. 
We ran at 2560 by 1440p, so it's pretty much 1440p. We did run with the RTX DLSS on. We ran the settings on high. We averaged 88 FPS. Actually, my MSI Afterburner showed me that we averaged 105 FPS, so tomato, tomato. A couple stats, the GPU did hit 71 Celsius, the CPU hit 67. I guess with cranking the fan up in the MSI Afterburner, that helped a ton, because uh, I never heard the fan this whole time crank up. The FPS max was 387. Our average was 88 slash 105 that MSI Afterburner showed as an average. Other than that, the settings and everything were good, man. Like if you wanted to play this game on high with RTX settings, you would be gravy. Like you, you'd be a happy camper. This is one bad mamma jam of a PC and I'm not done with everything with gaming. I'm gonna give it two thumbs up. I'm happy right here. If you wanna watch the rest of the video, we're gonna have some gaming after this, guys, and we're gonna show the FPS and then uh, on our way out the door. We got Fortnite loaded and we're over to the on screen over here. So let's jump over and look at what settings I picked. And I'm gonna run full screen with 2560 by 1440p. Uh, I got frame rate set to unlimited. Of course, I'm gonna run um, all my settings on Epic. I do have DLSS set to performance and I will run some MSI afterburner numbers for you guys. Of course, you can see our GPU is running about 68 Celsius and our CPU is 60. 7 celsius even if you put that small knock to a cooler on there it's going to knock that down about 14 to 16 celsius so you're going to be running a, right about where you want to be even if you just put the intake fan on that extra fan in the front with the knock to a cooler it is going to kill these numbers totally so you instead of having a space heater that uh, warms your room it's going to be cooling more efficient of course <laughs> for anything better this pc is a bad man jam guys all right guys i just wanted to tell you that this pc gets two thumbs up from the tech nitwit approval team and we uh yeah you could gain the living crap out of this as one bad man jam of a pc and uh you, you could definitely upgrade it of course uh we will probably have other videos on this pc about cooling and upgrading it and you know maybe maxing the ram out to 32 gigabytes and some other stuff like that so stick with us y'all Hey guys, it's Tech Nitwood here. Make sure you guys subscribe and like and hit that bell. Thanks.